Hey, Ian here and welcome back to Berlin Libreflip. Today is an exciting day because for the first time there is an actual chance that Libreflip will move on its own power for the very first time. So let's get going. Let's open this machine. There is the wiring. Right now Seckfault, the person writing the firmware for the machine, is figuring out which of the four leads to the server motor is which, so we know where to hook it up on the separate driver. Well, for first lights, first lights seen that, now the machine has power. Okay, the Arduino has. And even on the relay board we have some power, that's cool. And you know what, what the best thing is? So far there is no magic smoke visible anywhere. Okay, so let's program the Arduino. Yep, came back on, it's programmed. Let's continue with the tests. Next step is the very scary moment of, uh, for the first time, plugging in the 230 volt part. Uh, neither me nor Seckfold are electrical professionals, but as this is a currently a homebrew invention and we both know what we are doing, although not licensed, we'll do that and we are well aware of the location of the closest fire extinguisher. Okay, nice and wide shot, so let's see if this goes bang or not. Nothing happened. That I would count as a good sign. This is so exciting. Sekfold just said that we might see the box move. Maybe it's in, in the wrong direction, but we might see it move for the very first time. <laughs> Ooh, bad. To... So it moved? It, did it just move? Let me tighten the belt. Looks good. Let's see if this still is tight. Not perfectly, but good enough, I think. Okay, next try. So now we have actually set an RPM in the code. After much fiddling, we found some of the errors, so I think two of the phases were turned around and the code had a bug. It was trying to turn... The code was assuming that the server motor would have 3200 steps per revolution, which is not the case, it's uh, just 200 steps per revolution. So none of the calculations made any sense and it was moving much too fast. But good news so far. So far, still no magic smoke anywhere. So, rise! <laughs> It was it was uh, jumping. Yeah, that was. It was obvious. clearly jumping the we, thing. Okay, so not tight. <laughs> not tight enough. No, not tight enough. Okay, and that's also a result. Now we have tensioned the belt again properly, and uh, hopefully that works now. Oh, okay. It's going way too far. It's going way too far. Like, in that time, it could have went this distance. Oh, it's not time. It's a switch. Oh, okay. Demo. I told you it was safe. I think the server motor is just too weak. And that means that either the rubber springs don't take off enough weight, or the motor is too weak, or the concept is wrong. Today was a failure. Today was a learning experience, I should say. Actually, it was a failure. Um, we learned that the server motor is not strong enough, and I just ordered a new one. But this now seriously impacts my time planning. Let's see what happens from this. So, uh, back in the workshop, it's now uh, several weeks later. As you can tell from my length of hair, I haven't gotten a haircut. Uh, so, compare. Um... And the new motor arrived, so we can uh, put that in today. And let's see if that works. Thing is, the server motor only is rated for 2.8 volts. And Segfault told me, ah, it's fine, it ain't matter that much with the voltages of the server motor is. Uh, so good chance that we're gonna see some magic smoke today. Or we could see this actually working because this motor has like four times the strength. 
Let's unbox this. A replacement bracket, I guess, because we already have one. So that's it. That's the new one. So if you compare the two, it's quite a bit longer and has a lot more strength. Let's make some space so we can get this thing out. Let's unscrew this so we can exchange the separate motor. Yes. So the new stepper is mounted. Let's see if this works. Let's wire this up. Done. And actually, as you can see, a bit of a hack. We didn't pass the cable through here, but actually around here for testing. And we can uh, fix that later on if it turns out to be actually working. But if the motor actually burns up, or gets way too hot, uh, then this is the easier way to get it back out and use another one later. So, Segfold has a new laptop, and uh, so she needs to set up the complete IDE and uh, Arduino library stuff to connect to the Arduino over here, but um, really soon there is an actual chance of this box moving, hopefully. Okay, here's nothing. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Wrong way around. Nope, everything is the right way around. It goes the wrong way around. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was going the wrong way around, but let, let's put the box in the. Like, you unbreak the motor, I'll move it to the half position, uh, half up, and then uh, we do the same thing again. Yep. Right. Interesting. So it's definitely going the wrong way around. Please flip that bit. Let's try this again. Now we flip the direction of the stepper motor. This one isn't strong enough either, or what? Is this suction box really that heavy? So I just lubricated everything because I'm actually not sure whether I did that in the beginning or not. Uh, so maybe it's easier now, maybe it's not. Uh, here goes nothing. Are we running it on full power? No. The, oh, oh shit. The uh, the power was off. Should we try that again? Yes, please. Up. Oh, oh fuck nice. yeah! Now check if the motor got hot. No. Okay. Down. Fuck yeah! I didn't tell it to go down. It went down of its own accord. Right, let's try again. <laughs> Not listening to me. Power's on. Power is on. Okay, so what? And hold. Okay, so what's the. <laughs> okay. I didn't do that. You ready with the temperature sensor? Okay, I want you to keep measuring it until it falls down. Ready? Yep. Hmm. Consistent, the same behavior. It falls down and it does ticking. Yeah, the motor is uh, 4 degrees warmer than outside. So, uh, we have a theory. Let's try this. And this time I won't measure the stepper, I'll measure the Arduino. No, actually, I'm measuring the separate driver on the right Arduino, and it's still uh, 10 degrees warmer than room temperature right now. And let's see what happens when the box moves up. Okay, so, so it's 37. 
nine, forty, fifty, fifty-five. What the fuck is it doing, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Uh. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Right. Okay. It's um. Yeah. One of the coils is still unplugged. I forgot. I am. I unhooked. That was. That was pulling it up on one coil. Dang it. So, uh, we have a theory, because we, we think it's not the stepper that's the issue, the stepper works just fine, but the driver is too, sm uh, too small for the new stepper, and is actually severely overheating. Let's uh, test that theory. So right now we are at 55 degrees Celsius. Okay, 60. 65, 70, 75, 70, 80, 80, 90, 92, 90, okay, 98. That's it showed 98 when it dropped. That's yeah, so, so apparently this thing has a thermal protection in it, that means and it just cuts the power when it gets too warm. Okay, uh, cheers, I opened myself a beer because of this amount of frustration. So this is uh, a kind of situation right now. Let me, let me recap what happened. We exchanged the seven motor uh, for a stronger one, and that actually worked. It lifted the box entirely to the top, and it held it there uh, until the separate driver started to overheat. So we got thinking what to do about it. The obvious choice would be just to get a bigger separate driver uh, that wouldn't overheat that much, or get one with active cooling, um, which would also be an option. But that's just not easily available on the market. Not for all of you. I mean, I'm making this machine so all of you can remake this machine, can rebuild the machine, can uh, copy it and improve on the design, change the little bits and uh, improve it step by step. And right now, you couldn't, because if I now get something really fancy for the separate driver, then it would be really hard for all of you to uh, get the same thing or get something equally good. I mean, I would love to have a fancy separate driver like with a dynamic controller behind it that uh, actually gives you all the values and information and torque and, and stuff. That would be really cool and helpful uh, for future applications. Uh, but this wouldn't be easy because in the end it would easy either like it would it would be that I would need to make a PCB and sell that. And I wouldn't want you to make a PCB as soon as I lo lose interest in the project. Um, because I'm not making this book scanner to get rich off of it or, or to make a startup from this. I'm making this thing so the plans are out there so you can make it yourself independently of me. I m might sell a bunch of kits uh, and uh, already made book scanners, but it's not my startup. It's something I want to engineer and develop. So it's really hard for me to make this decision because in every step of the way, I kept in mind and keep in mind in this project that uh, it needs to be easy to be rebuilt by others. You need to be able to source the parts. I can't just dig through my workshop trash pile to source a part because you would have a different trash pile. Um, so right now, the option would be to design a PCB that has a better driver on it and everything we need, but that's not an option that would work for everyone out there. So the other way would be to redesign the way the motion works so uh, in, get rid of the rubber uh, bands and instead put a counterweight there. And I know that I said in an earlier episode that this would add about that much to the thickness of the book scanner. But I think there is a way to do it without that. But this basically throws us over my complete schedule and um, like back to the drawing board. This will take a lot and I'm not sure if I can uh, keep up with the weekly videos. Uh, with this design change later on in the project. Um, anyway, so that might be the way to go, to go with the with an Arduino separate driver that is like accessible for everyone. And with a separate driver, with a separate that's accessible for everyone. And redesign the motion, get rid of the rubber springs and put instead of uh, uh, one or maybe even two counterweights in that, uh, do this as well. Because it's also a safety thing. You've seen this thing quite violently drop when we uh, cut the power, when the driver cut the power. And I, I don't care about the hands of the operator, I care about the book. 
and the book could get damaged, and that's something that's not acceptable to me. And with the counterweight, as my first book's gonna w- had one, by the way, as well, this uh, danger just wouldn't exist. The thing just wouldn't drop uh, that that hard. It would it wouldn't drop at all. It would just stay where it is. Okay, uh, thanks for watching this uh, happy because it moved and disappointing episode because everything will change now and I need to get back to the drawing board. But um, this is just one part of a longer series where I show all the steps how I developed this page journey book scanners, including the failures and uh, issues that arise during the process. So if you like to follow the project, please subscribe to this channel. And I'm trying to publish weekly episodes every Thursday about this project. But with the upcoming design change, let's see if that still holds true in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching.